Okay, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Got a head-to-head -head video. It's T200 from Tile. It's up against the new Mizuno Pro 225. Two hollow construction irons, often some forged feels, some distance, but also some forgiveness. We're gonna pitch you up against each other, provide you with some numbers, and obviously my personal feedback, as always. Okay, so we're gonna jump straight in, and we're gonna start off with the Titleis T200. So I say, hollow construction. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about each of these irons, maybe what they're trying to offer. Uh, as we go along, but we'll kick things off with the T200. Both got the same shaft in, both at the same length and lie, so very equal test. Okay, that's a nice opening. Shot with the T200. Nice high ball flight, as you're gonna expect from this type of club, and about 190 on that carry. So what are one of the things I wanna look at between these two eyes is maybe the consistency element. Sometimes you go in these hollow constructions, Yes, we do tend to see some good ball speeds, don't we? Some nice forgiveness from that hollow um, construction, but then sometimes the sacrifice is just getting that, that, that consistency. Maybe that spin, obviously, strike will play a part of that, that distance control, those sort of elements. So obviously, as you may be moving, maybe out of that full game improvement, and you might be looking into this sort of category as a, as a progression through your sets as maybe your game progresses so I think when you're moving into something like that you're probably wanting that a little bit more that consistency out of the iron. So the thing with the tight list is you know we've got the word forged on there but it is a forged face only and I would say it just does sound a little bit sort of clicky and I think probably the only negative I have with it I mean it looks great the T200 as a back you look at it, it's quite slick but I don't know whether you can pick this up can you feel that hear that this little sort of plastic bit that goes on the back, it just feels a little bit cheap when you tap it. It feels like it's gonna be loose. Now, it's obviously not loose. You know, they're not gonna make something that's gonna fall off, are they? But just that little bit of that sound, a little bit, I think, as it comes through, just doesn't quite feel as, you know, again, it's sometimes misleading that word forge. It's a forged face, not a forged body. Touch leaky on that, but it flies really high. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a nice, flight on that golf ball. So this is a 7 iron I'm hitting which is coming in at 31 degrees of loft. Now the, the Mizuno, the 225 which we're going to come to in a bit, that's a 30 degree. So the Mizuno's a little bit stronger on that loft by one degree. So obviously that's going to take a, maybe a little bit of a take into account maybe when we look at the numbers. But 31 degrees loft for the T200. We've got a lot of tungsten in the head on this uh, club. So that's just going to provide that little bit of for that forgiveness, a little bit of that stability and just trying to get that ball speed up. A little bit pulley, a little bit of ground and ball together. There. That spin might just drop because of that. Yeah, you see that spin really just pull off, and that gets that little long left shot. And that's, I mean, obviously, that's more my strike there than the club, to be fair. But you can see that spin can just sort of drop, and the big difference of strike contact can really influence that spin. That's a better contact. It'd be interested to see the spin differences on those two shots alone there. A bit more of a better connection. There you go. So you've gone something like three and a, I don't know, what was it, three and a half thousand. That last one, we just got it a bit ground and ball together. Better strike there. You see spin more up to that five thousand. That's probably the area I was expected to sort of see that five to five and a half thousand. Yeah, it's a slightly stronger loft. Yes, that you might say, well, that spin's quite low, but look at the height I'm getting on that, 116 feet. So we've got some good land angle there at 49, just short of 50 degrees of land angle. So that's going to give us some stopping power. So maybe the other aspect we need to be just talk a little bit about, and this might influence, depending on your budget when you're going out to try these types of clubs, is the price. So T200 for a four through to pitch wedge is going to come in at £1,099. So quite a bit of money, as I appreciate. Again, it really depends on your budget. Hit one more shot. That's a nice shot. Touch left, we're gonna get bricky, but not a bad strike at all. Some good ball speed there. Typical club head speed around that 90 mile an hour mark. A little bit of that spin, 186 on that carry. Okay, so switching over, Mizuno Pro 225. And I tell you what, these are the cracking looking iron, aren't they? I mean, anybody says they don't look stunning, I think you need to go into the corner room and give your head a bit of a wobble. Uh, these look superb. Great look, 225, hollow head construction, as we've uh, probably talked about in the past. So decent bit of forgiveness. So if you're talking about the Mizuno Pro as a lineup, you've obviously got the 221, the pure muscle back. You've got the 223 which is that mid sort of cavity. And then this is the more forgiving in the Mizuno Pro lineup in the 225, but looks fantastic. A little bit longer blade length in comparison to the other irons in their lineup, but 
and it looks nice and sort of generous down by that golf ball but without going a massive thick top line and loads of offset looks a beautiful shape really nice shape that's a completely different sound and a completely different feel in in a much better way against the tightlist now we're obviously going into more of this forge well actually a forged neck and a forged face the back section of this club is stainless steel but you have got that copper underlayer, which is a big talking point with the Mizuno, which, you know, that layers of feelers, maybe they came out with in the previous model, which was the uh, MP20 range. That's kept in there. So we've got copper underneath before the plating of the, of the sort of satin chrome goes on top. But yeah, forged neck, forged face. The back bit is uh, stainless steel, but that is a very, very different feeling golf club in comparison to that T200 on the first shot anyway. an awful strike that's so low in the face it's absolutely bullet straight but it's a very low strike but do you know what look i mean look at those numbers there i mean that's not bad from that particular that was a great strike let's try and get a better one on this next one yeah i mean the sound and the feel off that is superb no wonder Mizuno, you know, they, they put that strap line there, nothing feels like a Mizuno. I mean, that just feels superb, muted sound. It's not as clicky. Well, when I say clicky, as I say with that, I think that plastic badge on the back of the T200, I don't know, I just, I seem to get that feedback there that it, it always feels a bit like a slightly louder sound. It feels a bit like that's, again, it's not loose, but it just it gives me that sensation. This just feels much more solid. Touch pull it there, but again, it feels superb. Very solid off the club face. Beautiful sound to that. That's a little bit of a toey one. That wasn't the greatest of strikes there. Very straight. Felt a bit more toey than what that looked actually on Trapman, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I've done very well. Yeah, good. So I think you're getting that feedback through the club there. You know, that did feel quite toey. I'm getting that feedback of that strike. Still got the height there, that land angle. So going back to the price point of these, so again, four iron through to pitch wedge, seven irons in the set is going to come in at £1,349. So there's a £250 difference between the price of these two clubs, which is quite a difference, isn't it? But then I think when you look at, you're getting the copper underlayer, you know, Mizuno is a brand. I think then as you look, the looks of the golf club from the back, I know this is only the back, but if we compare these two irons side by side, on the back of the club, I'm, I'm, I mean, to be fair, the T200 looks quite slick and it's quite clean across the back. I'm not quite keen on that plasticky sort of feel to it. Obviously, the Mizuno, very, very clean. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? I think playing position-wise, these two down side by side at golf ball. The 225 probably just got an ever so slightly longer blade length. Top edge, very, very similar, but a little bit longer blade length to the 225. So maybe a little bit more confident in spine, a little bit more squat in the T200. Again, you can maybe decide if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe there's a confidence thing, or if you want to look at a slightly smaller head than maybe the T200 there. But then I think then when you put the feel aspects into that, I think the Mizuno is a clear winner on that side of things for me personally. Again, the sound, the feel, very, very different for me. Okay, how's that one done there? So that's dropped a little bit, but didn't quite get that perfectly, but that uh, is still doing pretty well. Let's go and check out a few numbers, a little bit more detail. Maybe just look at that consistency. That's what we really wanted to look at between these two irons, wasn't it? They're all going to be maybe a little bit different to that loft difference uh, in terms of distance, but let's look at the consistency. Okay, so let's have a look at dispersion first. This is all carry numbers here and dispersion. So the 225 in the orange and the T200 in the white. So probably just that weaker one with the T200, probably just spoiling that dispersion a little bit. But both, I would say pretty similar. You know, you took that one out, probably very similar in, in terms of that sort of dispersion. You know, you got, could say the T200, maybe a little bit more because of three slightly up the right, three slightly up the left with the, with the 225. Not a great deal on it as an average, to be honest. And then let's have a look at the numbers. So that's quite interesting. So club head speed a bit quicker there with the 225. Exactly the same shaft, length, everything like that. Um, that that's 
quite surprised me really that moved quicker. It didn't feel like I moved it any quicker to be honest. But obviously we can see a good two mile an hour there. So obviously that's going to ease, going to create some extra ball speed. Again, with that less loft of the, the 225 is going to help a little bit on that again. Slight lower launch, maybe that a little bit loft difference, but a little bit of a higher spin there at 5,000 with a 4613 again as average. But looking at, again, the strike's going to play a little bit of difference, but we're going from like a, a three and a half thousand spin up to maybe a 5161 as a difference there. And then if you look at the Mizuno, it looks to be a little bit tighter there, doesn't it? So that sort of, again, just short around that four and a half thousand up to five, six, a little bit tighter on that um, lowest to highest of the spin number. Ball speed wise, again, similar there. You can see 124 up to 128. Maybe on the tightest there, 123 up to 126. So very similar on that, on that lowest to highest again on the actual ball speed itself. So land angle, very, very identical there. Peak height, very identical. And obviously carry distance, pretty much the same. Just getting there in a slightly different way with that launch and that spin and the speed. Right, okay, so probably didn't expect huge differences really on the numbers there between those two irons. They're very much in that similar sort of category, aren't they? But I think, again, it's that looks and the feel, which is very personal. I understand that. That's obviously down for you to sort of try. But for me, there's only real one winner there, and that's the 225 on that particular sort of test. And looking at the looks and the feel, the Mizuno is second to none in my eyes. Okay, post comments down below. Let me know your thoughts as always. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.